rearrange formula to isolate variables. Formula with squares and square roots. Well, on this sheet, I have two formulas and two very important formulas here. One is x square plus y square equals to r square. The other one is time period t equals to 2 pi square root l over g. Now, so these have huge applications. x square plus y square equals to r square. You apply, this is like a Pythagorean theorem, right? If you remember that, then if the sides are, let us say, x and y, then this hypotenuse is r, then that is how they are related. x square plus y square equals to r square. So that is one place where this formula is applied. The other one is, it is also an equation of a circle. So if I draw a circle here, right? with center at the origin, right? Circle with center at or the origin, then any point on this circle is found by using this formula, right? That is the equation of the circle. So any point is found by this. So any point could be x comma y and r is this distance from origin O. So this formula finds lots of application Therefore, it is important to isolate and understand how to use this formula, okay? And therefore, it is very important to know how to use this formula, okay? Now, let's do some examples here. First, let's isolate y from this formula, okay? If you want to isolate y, then what should you do? We can take away x square from both the sides, right? So, if I take away x squares on both the sides, so let me go in steps. Let's say x square plus y square, and I'm taking away x square from both the sides. So get r square minus x square. So on the left side, we are left with y square equals to r square minus x square. Now whenever you have square, then to get y, the best thing is you do square root, right? Let us assume that we are only working with the positive values. In that case, when we square root, we get only positive values. Let's square root on both the sides and then we get y equals to square root of r square minus x square. This is why, because square root of y square is, is y itself, right? We are taking where x and y are positive numbers. So we are only considering cases where both x and y are, that means x is greater than or equal to zero and y is also greater than or equal to 0, right? So we are not considering this half of our circle. We are actually considering the top half where x and y are both 0. In fact, the half in the first quadrant, x is 0 and y is 0, just this part of the circle, the first quarter of the circle. And in the triangle, you know, sides of the triangle will always be positive. Neg never negative. So we are considering that for the time being to keep our things simple, right? Now, let's consider that one side of this right angle triangle is, let me write here as, let us say, three centimeters. And the other one is, let's say this is five centimeters. Then what is going to be the height of the triangle? Let's say the base of the triangle is three, and that's a right triangle and the hypotenuse is 5. How will you find the height of the triangle? So we can use this formula to find height of the triangle. So let's try to use it. So you say, well, height will be equals to square root of r square, which is 5 square. 5 square minus x square, which is 3 square. Square root. And 5 square is 25. 3 square is 9. So square root of 25 minus 9. 25 minus 9 is 16. And square root of 16 is 4. And therefore, we can say, well, y equals to 4, right? So we get, if all the units are in centimeter, then we can say y is 4 centimeter, right? So if x equals to 3 centimeter and r equals to 5 centimeter, then y equals to 4 centimeter, right? That is how we can use this formula. It's a very helpful and useful formula, correct? Now let's look into the next formula, which is t equals to 2 pi square root L over G. Now let's try to figure out what is L from here. Let's say what is L, okay? And you do on your own what is G, right? You try to figure out what G is. I will show you a method of finding L from this formula. Now since there is a square root, 
Let's square both sides, right? If you square both sides, what do we get? We get t square equals to 2 square pi square, which is 4. 2 square is 4. And then you get pi square. And square of this number will be L over G. So that is what we get, correct? Now to find L, what are we going to do? We are going to divide by 4 pi square and multiply by G. So we get from here T square times G divided by 4 pi square and that gives us the value of L. So that is how we are going to find L from this formula, right? Length. So this formula is applied in case of a clock. So if there is a clock here, like a long clock, then that is the length of the pendulum, right? And G is the force of attraction by which we are being held on this earth, right? So it's a force of gravity. That gives us time period of the clock. So that clock moves like this and this. So, so that is the time, time which it takes to make one cycle. That is the time period T. And from this formula, we can find the time period of the clock. It depends only on the length of the pendulum, right? So you can have many questions where length is given and you need to find what time is, right? So, that is how time of one cycle, right? Time of one cycle for the clock. So, that is the a huge application of this particular formula, okay? So, this is the way you can do it. Let me show you this step once again. What I did here was I squared both sides. That means I squared this and I squared this, correct? I squared both sides. So, here I got T squared and when I square, then everything gets squared. 2 squared is 4, pi squared is here, square of square root is whatever was inside. So L over G, right? That is how I got it, right? So from here, we can find the length. And then I multiplied by G both sides, got it here, and divided by 4 pi squared. So that's my formula for length. And so I can write length for a given time period could be T squared over 4 pi G something like this okay so that is how we can write our formula good way to write this formula actually is you should write g over 4 pi since g is constant 4 is constant pi is constant but t could be a variable t square like this so either way you get the value of length if you know time period if you know the length you can find the time period of one oscillation okay so that is how we can use this formula I hope you appreciate the way we did these squares and square root formulas and shared some applications. Thank you.